Okay, let's get started. Welcome to my two-year anniversary video. Um, wasn't really sure I'd be making one of these, uh, but here I am. So, uh, this video is to celebrate the two-year anniversary of Milestone Play. Um, yeah, no, this is, this is absolutely fantastic. Uh, for those of you who do not know, based off of just watching the YouTube videos, uh, I'm a professional game master. Uh, most of what I do is run private Dungeons & Dragons games and things like that for a living. So it might seem weird doing a two-year anniversary video for the YouTube channel, considering its size, uh, but that's because most of the work I do actually isn't for public consumption. So this, this, this video is a, a celebration of the fact that I have had people for the past two years willing to help me, willing to pay me to make art and tell stories. And yeah, no, this is, this is unbelievable. So thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to have a list of games running up the side of the screen while I ramble on for a bit. Uh, these are most of the games that we have shared through Milestone Play over the past two years. Um, it's going to be incomplete. I'm going to forget something on it, but uh, yeah, that this is all that we've done. And it's for me, it's incredible. Uh, I did say that most of what I do is private. It's for individual groups, uh, whether friend groups, family groups, uh, things like that. And most of what I do is not publicly available. So there's a couple layers to that. And first and foremost, they, they are personal games. They are for people. They're not for a wide audience. And while I do want to move on to doing more wide audience based productions, such as things for this YouTube channel, um, most of what I've done has been private, which means that over the last two years, I've been exposed to a lot of real life and my players have been exposed to my life. Um, so over these last two years, we have moved houses and apartments together. We have uh, gotten jobs. We've lost jobs, gotten promotions. We've gone off to school. We've graduated school. We've gone through illness and accidents and tragedies and lost loved ones and had had newborn children. That is something that has happened. Like when I started this, I knew that like in an academic sense, that people who play games together, who tell these stories together, who spend this much time on a weekly basis, like you get attachments. And it's always been a big thing about friend groups that play TTRPGs frequently are better friend groups than those that don't, or at least that's an idea in the zeitgeist. But despite acknowledging that academically, after two years of experiencing this with strangers, with people that I never knew I would encounter, and then being saddened by their loss, like truly saddened by their losses, and then excited at, at the promotions, at the graduations, like this is not something that I was aware like internally emotionally that I'd be wrapped up in and I just thank you thank you for letting me be a part of your life thank you for being a part of mine um, yeah so a big part of this this celebration is what has happened however I do want to take this opportunity to provide some updates on milestone play as a business um, but also then the shared campaign world that a lot of my games are in, as well as do a Q&A. So feel free and jump ahead to whatever section you're actually here for. So the first section I want to hit is uh, Milestone Play as a business. Uh, what does the third year of Milestone Play look like going forward? And stealing an idea from another uh, YouTuber, a very big YouTuber, uh, CGP Gray, uh, they have taken this idea of instead of doing uh, a New Year's resolution, uh, doing a, a theme for the year, which I find very apropos just based off of how Milestone Play's uh, professional beginning happened at the beginning of a year. So it's a good way for my brain to kind of understand 
what I want out of the coming, the coming year. And uh, the third year of Milestone Play, I want to be the year of fulfillment. Um, thinking of this as like a trilogy for a book series or, or a movie series or something like that, uh, the, the first year of the first book, the first movie, is about introductions, about getting in, into the space, into the world, and gaining footing. The second is typically about depth, whether that's a failure that the heroes uh, have happened to them, whether it's a greater understanding of what's, what's to come, and then the, the finale of a trilogy is typically uh, wrapping everything up, everything that has been uh, motioned towards throughout the series, finding that fulfillment. And this is not to say that Milestone Play is not going to make it beyond year three. Uh, I simply don't know what Milestone Play has in store. This is something where I've gone in uh, not knowing if this is a small part of my life, a major part of my life, uh, whether this is a long-time career, if this is just a little interstitial thing. And on the chance that this is just a, a, a small portion of my life, I want to make sure that everything that we've been doing over the past two years leads to a conclusion, leads to something that has closure, leads to something that respects the time that has been given to it by all of the, the players, by the audience, by the community. So with this, the year of fulfillment is going to be about making sure that if this happens to be leading towards a conclusion in the near future, that everything is done with respect and everything is done uh, with a sense that things will be complete. So uh, the first thing I, I'm going to be focusing on in this year of fulfillment is ending campaigns. Now, I have had a couple campaigns end already, whether it was their natural conclusion or the tragedy of a TPK or something like that. Um, but I have a lot of campaigns currently going. And I want to make sure that, first and foremost, that these players that have given me so much of their attention, their time, their caring, yes, their funding, um, that it comes to a conclusion that everyone is happy with and, and makes sense and can allow for people to move on knowing that things uh, found their resolution. With that, I, I'm not planning on stopping taking new campaigns, however, until some of these really finish up, uh, as opposed to starting up new campaigns. Uh, Milestone Plays 30 Year is going to have more mini-series, mini-campaigns, whether it's uh, one month of a game, two, three months, uh, I want anything that I start in this year to have a good chance of finding its conclusion in this year as well, and hopefully many of them. And part of this idea is the fact that if I'm going for this, this fulfillment, that I should be starting new projects that are going to meet that goal from the onset. With this, there's a bunch of history in my homebrew world that needs uh, fleshing out, so these miniseries are going to be kind of established within how things are currently going. Now that gets a little bit ahead on, on the Malpos shared world updates, but that's okay. Um, the final thing that I want out of this year of fulfillment for Milestone Play is going to be uh, something permanent, something published. Uh, now I'm not setting my sights too grand and too high, but a lot of the work I was doing through the Milestone Play name before I became a professional GM was I was making just little tabletop role-playing games for myself, little mini systems and things like that. And uh, within this next year, I want something that is going to be available for purchase on the internet. Uh, it's probably just gonna be digitally published, but I want something that uh, is also con concluded. Uh, I have all these little little projects that, that are all incomplete, they're not polished, and within this year of fulfillment, I want to take at least one of those, uh, get it fully edited, get it uh, well designed and, and, and pretty to look at, and get that available for purchase. So uh, that is the business end of what Milestone Play's third year, the year of fulfillment looks like. Uh, continuing on to the shared world of Malpos, where a lot of my campaigns and one-shots take place. Uh, this is a shared homebrewed world where all of my players are in the same setting. What they do affects the world around them and therefore affects the world that other players are playing in. So with this next year, 
Uh, I've already spoken about wanting to complete campaigns for their own conclusion, but also a lot of these campaigns are leading towards something big. Some of the campaigns that have already concluded have begun trickling towards a change in the world. And a couple of the campaigns that are still going have their own elements of what that change may or may not be depending on what the players do. So in concluding these campaigns over this next year, I want to build towards the coming of a new age. And at the precipice of that, I want to have a crossover event. I want to have a one-shot where I take characters from all of these different campaigns in the same world space and bring them together to form the final push of what that change in the world looks like. Now, this is still very broad, very open. Uh, there's probably going to be many, many players that want to be, it, uh, be in it, but I do have to limit and it's going to come down to timing, who's available, who's available in what capacity, as well as uh, really making a roster, making a roster of uh, characters to form a party that are all going to mesh and work well together and make sure that for this event things go as, uh, s as smoothly and really as um, pleasantly as possible. So depending on how that is, it's going to be gauging how different players play the game, it's going to be gauging on what characters are coming. No matter how much I love having uh, a set of players at the table, maybe don't have a party of six wizards. Maybe allow for other aspects to show through. So it's going to be a while before we get to that. Uh, maybe not in, until October, November, December. Uh, it depends how long it takes the other games to kind of wrap up, but uh, that is something that's coming from Elpos. Uh, in the meantime, I spoke about the mini-series and exploring the world space. Uh, I do want to take the chance for these mini-campaigns, these mini-series, to look at the world that we already have and look into the history of the world and to a bunch of different places and time periods and use these mini-series to flesh all of this out before we crack open the new age of the world. So that's kind of where the mini-series all fall within the continuation of Malpos. Okay, now we have the Q&A. Uh, I did open up a Q&A to uh, all of my players, to my Discord servers, to Twitter, to YouTube, all this stuff. A uh, handful of people uh, responded with questions, some with many more questions than others. So as opposed to trying to order these in any uh, logical order, which would make sense, uh, I'm just going to group all of the questions based off the people who asked them. That way there is at least some continuity and I don't have to continue to repeat uh, names over and over again for the people that asked multiple questions. So uh, the first question that is uh, set up for me is a very uh, business advertising based question. I thank you for asking it. Uh, the first series of questions are from Darth2112. So that first question, I do have them listed, uh, is going to be, what can we do as your existing player base to support Milestone Play year three and beyond? Thank you for that uh, chance for advertising in this advertising video. Um, the biggest thing you can do is to simply share my work. Um, while yes, uh, joining the Patreon and things like that and, and joining paid games and all that helps me financially in the, in the moment, uh, for the continuation of Milestone Play, I do need to reach a broader audience as the, the YouTube channel grows and uh, hopefully get a big enough audience for when I try and do one of those uh, publications that enough people can see it that, that it's any money I put into having a well-designed and maybe a little bit of art in, in whatever uh, publication I do, uh, that those costs can be covered. So the biggest thing is helping me spread uh, spread my audience. So watching all of a YouTube video, getting that uh, view percentage, uh, sharing them, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Discord servers, Reddit, uh, just making other people aware of them, uh, liking, commenting, all of those things that every other person on the internet wants you to do with their media, that's what I need you to do. Um, sharing uh, and making other people aware of what I do is what's going to help Milestone Play grow into the future and allow for me to transition into a broader audience. Uh, the next question is, what tools and techniques have you outgrown as the scope of the business has expanded over time? 
so I started off Milestone Play, uh, started looking for players, uh, trolling through Facebook groups and just commenting on every single person looking for a game that they could hire me to run. And um, while those games uh, have been decent, those games are, uh, some of them still going and I very much appreciate them. And those players uh, uh, pay me the entire cost of the session. Um, there was a lot of work and a lot of very bad feelings that went around six, eight hours a day just begging people to let me run games for them. It, it felt really bad. Uh, now I'm doing a lot more of uh, things like startplaying.games, which is a, a website that connects uh, players with game masters and uh, start playing does take a, a small portion of the payment of every single session uh, as their fee for this. Um, and while it'd be nice to have all of the money being paid to me for my games, uh, it also makes it so I have to spend a whole lot less time looking for players. And it also saves me that mental fatigue of having having to just ask people, hey, you want to play my game? Hey, you want to play my game? Someone, someone, please play my game. So that, that is something that's changed. However, with that, I also post on Facebook a lot less. So I, like the Facebook has really died away from being a tool I use uh, for gameplay purposes, for running games. Um, I typically hide all of this junk when I shoot a video, but I left it out so I could actually get for this question. Um, I have a notebook for every single game, every single campaign that I run. And while I have Word documents and things like that that I uh, take notes in, uh, anything that I need to randomly scroll out goes in this notebook. However, uh, I started off by having a lot of name tags for all of the characters at the back for like a subset of pages specifically for that character. And I haven't actually used that as much as I thought I would. Uh, there are some times that I do use it. And with that, there is this level of uh, only the most important things go in there for like when I'm tracking something long term. And with that, I, I'd love to show you, but a lot of these things are still active, so I can't. But yeah, I thought I'd be using these individual character tabs a lot more. Uh, but as the games have continued and I'm running more games, that's just something that I never really fully picked up into uh, my techniques for running a game. Uh, so. Uh, next question would be, uh, what tools and techniques are you trying or moving toward to sustain and grow milestone play? Uh, so, yeah, so it's the biggest business thing that I'm trying to really upgrade is going to be my Patreon. Um, based off of the, the nature of the work that I do, most of it being running games for private groups, most of my work on a weekly basis, 85 to 95 percent of the work that I do, is for... Uh, like four people, five people, six people, and they're the only people that, that get that work. And already making role-playing games is a very ephemeral type art form. And so I don't have a whole lot of stuff that I'm currently putting up as like motivation for joining the Patreon. So over the next year, I will be expanding out the types of things that I am putting up there and the types of things that I'm putting for the the patrons to get as a as a special gift for only them so yeah that's the biggest thing that i'm going to be working on going into the next uh next year in addition to the expanding out into trying to get something published uh next question we have from darth is uh, what is your go-to activity to relax or decompress when you take time for yourself uh, i spend a lot of time on youtube a lot of time watching videos um, but i also uh, i go for walks uh, I, I go, I hike, uh, I just try and get outside. Uh, I spent a uh, handful of years in the zookeeping field before turning to uh, this role-playing game type of career. And with that, I was outside working every single day, uh, middle of the summer, middle of the winter. And it's something that I need. I need to be outside. So especially when I have like multiple games in a, in a single day, most of the time between those games actually isn't for preparing for the next game. I try to have that all done ahead of time. 
uh, what that gap space is for is for me to get out of a basement, get out from in front of a screen, and go outside. Next question is, uh, is there a preferred office hours or similar time to contact you to support your time on and off the clock? Uh, for those of you who do not know, I have a general open inbox policy for my players for reaching out whenever they need something. Uh, based off of the hours that I work, um, some of my games are midday, some of them are evening, some of them go into the middle of the night. So depending on the day, I could be up and moving and in work mode at pretty much any time. So I, I encourage players to send me uh, messages at any point in time and I will get to them as soon as reasonable. Uh, with that though, uh, there is this idea of when am I on or off the clock. And uh, the biggest thing for me is that's something for me to limit. I do want you guys to feel uh, available to send messages at any point in time. Uh, the biggest thing I ask though is, depending what time you are sending your message, be cognizant of how it reads. There is a very different feeling when you get a 3 a.m. message that is, I had this wacky character idea, what do you think about this? Or a 3 a.m. message of like, hey man, can we set up some time to talk? Like, a 3 a.m. message of like, hey, we need to talk, that hits real differently and kind of sets warning lights off in my brain of like, oh no, is there something wrong? Is something wrong in your life? Have, have I done something to offend? So I maintain message whenever. It's on me to determine when I'm answering emails and in inboxes and things like that. Uh, but just if you're going to be sending something at 3, 4 a.m., make sure you recognize the words you're putting down and how that may read depending when I see the message. Um, so yeah. <laughs> The final serious question from Darth is going to be, uh, how do you plan to implement the changes coming with 1D&D &D or whatever Wizards of the Coast ends up releasing in 2024? Uh, with this, uh, I am already processing 1D&D &D or whatever they're going to call it in the future as its independent game. Uh, so for when in the official release occurs, uh, that will be something separate that I offer. There will be 5th edition and there will be 1D&D. &D. And if we're doing 1D&D, &D, yeah, go ahead and use anything from 5th edition since it's supposed to be backwards compatible. But if we're running 5th edition D&D, &D, there will be a line drawn of like, let's not cross this line. That way people aren't trying to mix too far into 1D&D &D of upgrades or improvements or things like that that don't mesh with the initial... Uh, fifth edition rules. So uh, there will just be that line drawn in the sand and we will decide what side of that line we are playing on. Uh, we do have a couple uh, non-serious questions from Darth, which is wonderful. It helps break up the monotony of serious. Uh, so first question is Sammy Hagar or David Lee Roth? Uh, David Lee Roth, mainly because that's the name that I was more exposed to as a child and I really like it when he talks to the guitar. Uh, I don't know if there's any songs besides Yankee Rose where that happens, but yeah, I like that. Uh, next question, left Twix or right Twix? Uh, I am uncertain. Uh, if, you, if you could just give me both of them, and uh, that will allow me to make an informed decision. And finally, what is your favorite Olympic sport? I'm a big fan of gymnastics. Uh, I'm not too big on competition. I don't care about... Uh, sports that much uh, in, in terms of watching them. So for me, it comes down to uh, what looks the coolest. And I really like uh, uh, uneven bars and balance beam and things like that. Things that are a bit more acrobatic and athletic as opposed to the more uh, choreographed dance routines. Um, those things can be absolutely fantastic, but this tangent has gone on way too far. Uh, the next couple questions are from Bear to Lil, and the first question they have is, will your overall business format remain similar to its current state, i.e. mostly campaigns, community requests, one-shots, and video production, or do you plan to move into other media or markets as well? Kind of answered this earlier, but uh, mostly what you guys are going to be experiencing is going to be the same. It's going to be the games that I'm running, the videos I'm producing. However, over the course of this next year, hopefully there are a few other uh, markets I'm getting into with the digital publishing and things like that. Uh, so keep your eye out and the more you support the things I'm currently doing, the easier it will be for me to move into new markets. So yeah, just continue supporting what we have now and that will help me move into the next. 
Uh, next question is, do you plan on attending Gen Con again this year? Are there other events you have your eye on? Those of you who do not know, uh, I went to Gen Con in 2022, ran a handful of games, and uh, made a couple friends out of it. So that was fantastic. Uh, I do plan on going to Gen Con in 2023, uh, as long as nothing tragic happens or, or life situation changes or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I should be at Gen Con in 2023. And uh, maybe if you're planning on going, reach out. We'll try and meet up or something like that. And maybe have a little milestone play get together. Uh, in terms of other events, uh, I currently do not have a strong eye on other events. Uh, there have been a couple players who have asked me about a couple other conventions, Gary Con and things like that. And uh, at this point in time, while it'd be interesting to go, I currently do not have the means of attending such events. Uh, but if you really want to see me somewhere, uh, reach out and I'll at least look at the availability. Uh, and the final question, GIF or JIF, JIF or GIF? Uh, I uh, have anthropological uh, studies behind me and I believe that as long as people understand what you're saying how you pronounce the word does not matter uh, also with my world building uh, I follow a George Lucas approach of however I write down the word uh, there will be a thousand people throughout the universe that will say that word that name differently so I do not care jif gif gif jif however the writer of the, the formatting very specifically said that it was GIF. So if you have any feeling towards writer's intent, that should sway your opinion. Otherwise, say whatever you want. Uh, next question is from Call Me F, and this is a question they're not going to want me to answer in this format, but I'm going to do so anyways. Uh, the question is, at what level can we hope that a party member finds a gun? I am not asking for a meta weapon. I am asking for comically unwieldy but powerful you pull up the gun fire it and there's a giant cartoonish cloud of smoke where you are standing and uh, before it clears and Zoran's visor is on backwards uh, if you do not know who Zoran is uh, check out the world anvil for milestone play for Malpos. Uh, there's not much on Zoran there yet I will be fixing that I, I will be fixing that uh, anyways uh, guns are already in the world space especially very uh, ineff uh, inefficient uh, black powder weapons, um, very destructive, but very inefficient in terms of uh, character using them. But yeah, no, if you, if you want, uh, want to get one of those, I suggest going to the Everstorm Sea and heading towards the southern end of it where a lot more pirates are. Uh, there's not too many guns in the Storm Broken Lands, but they come from overseas, which means the pirates have brought them. So yeah, if you want a gun, go there. Uh, and our final question uh, is from Thrillio. Our final question is, I notice you run and have videos for other game systems as well. Do you plan on branching out into other games, or is it mainly by request and or popularity? Um, yes, so uh, I do run a bunch of other systems, uh, mainly for my community one-shots, my free one-shots, and thanks to the people who support me, thanks to my Patreon members, and all of that. Um, so I very much push for players to play things other than Dungeons & Dragons. The game system you play, the rule system, affects the story you tell. And there are certain stories that, while you can make them work in D&D, &D, uh, they would prefer a different system, a different set of mechanics, a different set of incentives to tell that sort of story. Uh, with that, uh, I personally do not feel like I am of high enough quality in those game systems to charge people to have me run them for them. Uh, whether it's just a different version of D&D, like 4th edition D&D, or it's something like Call of Cthulhu, while I enjoy the systems, I, I, I want to play the systems, I also acknowledge that a lot of people that are playing them know the system better than I do. So currently, I am not offering them as a paid game. Uh, in the future, if I get more comfortable with the system to a point where I feel like uh, I have a bit more of knowledge and control at the table, and the players will be getting something out of me running the game as opposed to finding a different uh, game master. Uh, I will branch out to run other paid games, but for the moment, um, either they're going to be used as a community game to just freely explore another system for the players to be able to not worry about getting the most out of the experience and just getting to uh, mess around, bop around, and figure out how the game works, or things like uh, YouTube videos where even if I'm not comfortable 
uh, running it as a paid game, uh, I will make videos about other games, such as my Dungeon World videos. My Dungeon World videos are actually the videos that have done the best on this channel. Uh, I did run Dungeon World uh, as a volunteer at a library for a teen group for about two years. So very comfortable with the system. I don't know how I feel about uh, running that improvised of a game uh, as a paid game, possibly in the future, but I am very familiar with the system, so I figured I would make some videos to help newer players with those. And uh, there should be at least one or two more Dungeon World videos coming in the future, as well as other systems as I explore them and try and make them more accessible for uh, my players and other players who want to kind of look at them. So yeah, there will be other systems in the future. Uh, just the format that they come in uh, will be very much based on uh, my comfort level with charging for them or if it's going to be something more theoretical or a bit more of a free play situation. So yeah, that's, that's how I kind of gauge whether or not I'm running a game uh, for a fee or if it's going to be something that is for free. Uh, and yeah, that is our final question for the Q&A. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this little anniversary video, this little celebration of what has been and what should be coming in the future. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate you for everything that you have allowed me to do and continue to allow me to do. And if this is the final year of Milestone Play, I want to make it the best as possible. And if it's not, if there's a year four and five and six, I want to set myself up to go into those next years as a, an expanded and better business. Thank you so much.